earthquakes in Nepal, train wreck in Philadelphia, continuing genocide in Congo, perpetual wrangling in Congress, allegations, or is it proof, of cheating and lies by national sports hero, the ripped from the headlines list goes on and on. But there was another news story early last week, now almost totally buried under the succeeding avalanche of death, devastation, and dismay. Dateline, Associated Press, Vatican City, last Sunday. Cuban President Real Castro paid a call Sunday on Pope Francis. Bienvenido, Francis said in his native Spanish, welcoming Castro to his studio near the Vatican Public Audience Hall. The Cuban president, bowing his head, gripped Francis's hand with both of his, and the two men began private talks. After leaving the Vatican, Castro, the brother of Fidel, the revolutionary leader who brought the communists to power in Cuba, gushed with praise for Francis. When the Pope goes to Cuba in September, I promise to go to all his masses and with satisfaction, Castro said at a news conference after the Vatican talks. I read all the speeches of the Pope, his commentaries, and if the Pope continues this way, I will go back to praying and go back to the church, and I'm not joking, he said. I'm from the Cuban Communist Party, that doesn't allow religious believers, but now we are allowing it. It's an important step, Castro said. Speaking about Francis, Castro said he has been very impressed by his wisdom, his modesty, and all his virtues that we know he has. I'll return to last week's news in a little while. But first, let's take notice of today's scripture readings. In the gospel portions, these Sundays of Easter, we've heard Jesus giving charge to his disciples. He tells them, he tells us, to continue in the way he has been showing. He prays for them, he prays for us to be steadfast in that way. In particular, this Sunday, Jesus makes this prayer, I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out of this world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Disciples of Jesus, then and now, you and me, we are in this world of earthquake, train wreck, death, devastation, dismay. Precisely in this world, we are right where Jesus wants us to be. Escape from God's good world is not what Jesus is all about. The heart of Jesus is deeply wrapped up in, deeply wrapped around worldly reality, both sorrowful and joyful worldly reality.
Easter season epistle portions have been coming from a wonderful old pastor by the name of John, who encourages us to embrace this heart of Jesus, this loving heart of God that is wrapped around this world in all its joy, all its sorrow. Says Pastor John this morning, whoever has the Son, Jesus, the love of God incarnate, whoever has the Son has life. It is this very fact that moves the Apostle Paul to sing words that I hope will be read at my memorial Eucharist. I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Finally, during this Easter season, we've been reviewing the first months of the church's life as reported in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. This morning, we hear about the choice of Matthias to take the place among the apostles that Judas had abandoned. Please notice the standard of choice. We looked for one who had walked with Jesus. The words are, who accompanied us during all the time that Jesus went in and out among us. We looked for one who had walked with Jesus and who, quote, would become a witness with us to the resurrection. This is at the core of the church's life. It gives me my two-point takeaway this morning. One, walk with Jesus. Two, be witness to resurrection. Walk with Jesus be witness to resurrection. Now I'll return to the headlines, taking with you these quick reflections on today's scripture portions. <coughs> <coughs> the religion of Jesus, the religion of Jesus is in this world, in all its messiness, particularly at points of dismay, devastation, and death. Heartily in this world, full-heartedly, whole-heartedly, perhaps even most especially broken-heartedly, We are in this world to walk in and out among the death, devastation, and dismay. To walk there in love, bearing witness to resurrection. Resurrection. New life. Second chance. Third chance. Fourth and forever chance. We are to do that persistently. We are to do that humbly. We are to do that courageously, walking in love, bearing witness in love. Whether earthquake or train wreck 
genocide or corruption, death or devastation or dismay. Walk in love. Witness to resurrection. Then even a hardened atheist might say, I am impressed by her wisdom, her modesty, and all her virtues. Exemplary walkers, exemplary witnesses constantly rise up. They rise up in every age. They rise up in every family, every tribe, every nation. In my book, that fellow from Argentina who in Rome took the name Francis, he is one of those exemplary walking witnesses. The transformative power of his walk and witness is stunning, which is why it's worth repeating the near miracle story of his meeting with the longtime authoritarian atheist from Cuba. The humble walk, the simple witness, has enormous healing power. I suspect each of you is able to name other exemplary walking witnesses, persons in your own life much less well-known than Francis, who have touched your life, about whom you can tell stunning, near-miracle stories. I suspect. Indeed, I quite definitely know and do here declare that you and I are called to walk in the same way, bearing the same resurrection witness to continually stunning near miracle effect. To the glory of God, whose name is love, who from the first day even unto today forever makes all things new. Hallelujah.